You're watching Ninja Queen Bee TV. Stay tuned. You guys definitely had some very valid points. But my question now is, is this really a big problem? Because, you know, we have bigger problems in the world, like terrorist attacks and things like that. But do you think this is a big problem? And if it is, what can be done to help it? Because society, when we say society, society is a huge place. Society is a huge amount of people. So if I decide not to like a girl's picture because she's nude or because I don't agree with it, it's not going to stop the next person. So I think it's a trend. It's, it's something that has to begin with one person, just like racism. I'm sorry to compare it, but I feel like if one person, you know, shows a good example and, you know, shares that example with their friends and family, it could keep going. So do you think that there's a solution to this epidemic of half-naked women on social media? I don't think it's something at this point we can just turn around and change the world. Um, as being a mom of a two-year-old, I can only start with mine. So the way I try to enforce that with her is that, you know, I try to validate her in other ways to not think in more of a physical aspect. So, you know, it, to, to others it might be simple, but she's two years old, she's not allowed to wear a two-piece. I'm sorry. I'm not putting my daughter in a two-piece. I don't know what the next person can be thinking, so it's like I can only start with validating her in other ways more than something visual to show her that her body is a temple and she should value herself, and then from there hopefully she can then carry on that trend with her children. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. And I just wanted to say I think that as much as we have this overly sexualized, you know, generation of women, we also have such a good generation of like this queen epidemic that we have as well. Hello. You know, these naturalistas, these strong women that are bringing it back to America in the 1970s that are, you know, just naturally comfortable with who they really are. So we can't take away from that too. And I think True. that slowly but surely we're trying to get there, but it's gonna take a while, yeah. you know, with everything else that's going on. But I, I do commend those young ladies who are out there and just simply being themselves. You're definitely right about that. What do you have to say I about think, changing uh, this? I think the media has to stop the over sexualization of everything. Mm -hmm. And um, we also seen like in the news, like I watch a lot of newscasters, when they come on the news at 5 or 11 p.m., they look a certain way. Mm -hmm. They portray this like skinniness and they make themselves look like they don't drink water. <laughs> And it comes from there. Like, I think she's beautiful. She's amazing. You understand what I'm saying? And you are everything. So <laughs> it's like we need to have some type of representation of people that are not just skinny and tall and thin in everything that we do. Once we have that, it would change the mental modes of everybody else. Because what media is doing is controlling the mental aspect of everybody. Sure. What we see is what we act on. Mm -hmm. We believe that if you're not, you know, one ten pounds look a certain way and look certain way, yeah. then you're not pretty. That's pretty is that's not a definition of being pretty. So the media has to act first. Once the media act first it would transform to the other audience, to yeah. us, and then it would change a lot of things. Until then, if the media doesn't act and we have all this Instagram and all these people that doesn't even, they probably can't even spell their last name, but they get like 12,000 likes. Mm -hmm. And you went to school for four, five, six years, mm -hmm. you get 30 likes. It's not about the likes, but it speaks volume of what are we, what is my point? Yeah. Right. Are we Where looking at how you place? look or what you can actually offer? Sure. So I think if you start with the media, once the media correct that, it will spread out mm -hmm. to the populace. So. Can I just add on to that yeah. as well? As someone who, um, I love media, you know, as I mentioned to you guys earlier, that's what I went to school for. It's mm -hmm. within my heart so much and I've studied it so much. And what he just said, I'm so happy that somebody who didn't even study it can see mm -hmm. what I was also taught in school 
Um, if you look at a news broadcaster, the average span of like a female broadcaster's career doesn't last up until about 10 years. Sure. Because she starts getting old, she may have children, all of this changes. Her physical being changes. But if you can look at, back at the men broadcasters, some of them are reaching retirement age and they've been there. Their looks have nothing to do with the security of their job. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I think that I like that he pointed out. The media business definitely, even from news reporters, sports reporters, they sexualize us in every way. Now that you can tune into Fox 5 and you see someone wearing something that you probably wear to a club, it's changed dynamically. Mm -hmm. No more skirt suits and pencil skirts and Brenda Blackman being so firm and strong. We don't see that anymore. We don't have that anymore. It's true. The media yeah. is a very powerful tool. Mm -hmm. It could be used for good as well as it could use, be used for bad. Yeah. I feel like the media conditions everyone's mind. Mm -hmm. And if you're not strong-willed or if you're not conscious, you can fall into whatever it is that they're selling. I feel as though the emphasis is being placed on the hypersexualization of wi on women um, just to move our minds away from what's really happening in the world. There are so many other social issues that are impacting our society that it almost is kind of crazy or insane rather to think that we have to be debating about why a woman is showing her body in media when compared to everything else that's happening out there in the world. Women who are being forced into sex trafficking, mm -hmm. you know, children who are starving in other countries. There's so many issues, but this seems to be the biggest of all. A lot of it has to do with all of the other industries that are benefiting as mm -hmm. well. True. Beauty industry, people buy products here. Outfit, clothing. Shoes, clothes, cars, food. Mm -hmm. There's so many other industries that are benefiting from the hypersexualization of women that for us to say we need to change this right away, it's going to be almost impossible. Yeah, yeah. As Alexa said, it can't happen overnight. But someone does have to start somewhere. You're definitely right. Wow. So this topic definitely is something that will never go away, will always be a, something that the society deals with. But at the end of the day, I do like the point where you said you will start with your daughter, you know, letting the little ones know they're beautiful, accepting who they are, dressing them a certain way. It's basically the way you were raised. Because I know as, Afri as an African, we were raised very strict, you know, but some of us branch out and be a try to Americanize ourselves and do things the American way and things like that. Some Caribbeans were, were very raised, they were raised very strict, so they know their values, they know their morals. A lot of people do not have those type of relationships with their family for them to have any values or morals. So it's not about judging them. Granted, the society has to accept everybody, but then again, it's also the company to keep. So I can have morals and my friends don't have to have morals, but they can watch what I do and that should possibly help them be a better person. Mm -hmm. Unless they just decide not to, you know, be a better person. Exactly. So it starts with us too. So we should try to make everybody that are surrounded by us, we should try to be an example to them and help them in different ways. We're all ambitious women and men and we, we I'm, sh I'm sure you play a big role with the people that surround themselves with you. I play a big role with my friends. You guys do the same thing. So let's start from there. And I think by doing that, it will help a lot of women possibly have a self-esteem or grow a self-esteem or be able to share the story as to why they were a certain way. But until then, we will keep liking pictures on Instagram <laughs> and following certain people. But um, yes. So I just wanted to say thank you so much guys for being a part of this shoot, for this panel shoot. And I know you're a very lucky man to be in the midst of all these beautiful ladies here. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedules to be here and I really appreciate it. Thank you so thank much you. for having thank us. Thank you. So guys, thank you for watching Nigerokumi TV. This is the first unisex panel and this will not be the last. So stay tuned. Yes. Very nice.